enough. Um, there is a lot of exploits that have been happening in the Linux world and uh, mm -hmm. open source communities, if you will. Ghost was. Uh, there, yeah, I mean, just run down the list. There was Heartbleed. There was Shell Shock. There is um, the one that I keep forgetting. Poodle. There's Ghost and Poodle. Oh, Poodle yeah. uh, so, can we make the statement that Linux is a secure operating system anymore? Uh, could we make that statement before and have backed it up? What are your thoughts on that? Obviously. Come up and sit down. It's <laughs> a trick. Come on. Come on. <laughs> room for one more. <laughs> Actually, like room, room for three for more. Three more. <laughs> Looking for yeah, looking for participants. Yeah, we'll, we'll participate here. Just because it's me. So it seems to me like a lot of the exploits are always, are, are often at least, uh, uh, centered around overflows, buffer overflows. And, um, you know, it, 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 somebody's overflowing something and then exploiting a system because of that. And I'm wondering, uh, you know, they just thought it'd be a way to categorically prevent that. Just get rid of the buffers. Yeah, get rid of the buffers, right. <laughs> no, uh, buffers. Uh, no buffers. No buffers. Uh, <laughs> there just ought to be a way to make sure that you're not overflowing whatever buffer you're writing to. It's a, it's a matter of a language construct that the, the, the programming language just won't overflow the buffer. Yeah. Yeah. That'd be a way. Yeah. Um, Better education. Better education for what, though? I mean, for the developers that develop the okay. stuff. But the, like the bash overflow stuff was a 20 year dormant bug mm -hmm. that people yeah. managed to figure out. Yeah. 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 Uh, but you, you, you threw out several different things. There was Heartbleed and, and uh, Poodle, the, the Poodle and, and which one was the bash one? Uh, I'm, I'm sort of, they've all been pushed out of my memory now. I don't really remember which <laughs> right, one's exactly. which. But they're not strictly Linux. The, there's an SSL vulnerability that's really SSL v3. Right. It's, it's not, it, it's, it's open SSL and there's other SSLs that do that. And it's, it's not just Linux, it's, uh, it's uh, Windows and any, anything that takes advantage of the SSL. Uh, uh, right, but it was also, uh, it, I think, yeah, the, well, Ghost was the C library. You need to come on up here. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, but so it's not strictly Linux. It's 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 also Windows, and I'm not really sure where BSD fits in there. BSD's um, pretty big. But I think BSD was hit by Bash also by the shell shock. As a uh, yeah, because it was, it was open was, SSL. Yeah, yeah, yeah but. Exactly. Uh, uh, so oh, can you call different. can you call Linux secure? It's it's kind of hard to say. I, at this well, point, and, 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 I'm using yeah. Linux as an umbrella. Sure, term, sure. Can you call open source secure? The, the the thing is, you can get a fix very very quickly with open source once it's exposed. Uh, uh, once it's exposed, um, and, and because the source code is open and, and available for more people to look at, it'll you'll expose more vulnerabilities like that. I think. The only problem. I feel like I'm supposed to be talking to. Right. No, that's fine. That's fine. I can say not here. Uh, the only problem is you got like the government NSA. We don't know how much they're taking advantages of these and not even informing us either, though. Well, they might not oh, be sure informing us. But they're taking advantage of everything and keeping sure. everything. So, uh -huh. sure. What's the question? <laughs> well, sure. Okay, well, take the NSA. The NSA is, is known to have, have worked with software vendors to build backdoors into some software. Uh, the, the, the PGP guy, um, uh, Phil... Phil Zimmerman. Zimmerman, Zimmerman, yeah, Zimmerman. Zimmerman. He uh, he he has talked about how the NSA approached him to try to do that. He left the company he was working for because he didn't want any part of that. Uh, but the thing about open source software is, you know, sure somebody may pay you or force you to put a backdoor in, but because it's open source, everybody can see it. Well, then also avoid it. Brings up another thing. Patch too. it out. Is it, um, with the uh, the recent note uh, news about GPG, I believe, and the one person who is oh, the guy, oh yeah, yeah, the guy that is trying to make a living off of it, exactly, and who's going it's broke because of it. Yeah. And someone created a did he get funded? Uh, some sort of funding. Did he get funded enough? Crowdfunding. I heard he did. Two hundred fifty k. Yeah, that's total. Excellent. Okay. Excellent. Is, is the question is it more secure than? Come on up. Yes, yeah, here you can. <laughs> you were talking the worst. I should go. I, I'm done talking. <laughs> I said everything I know. 
I mean, is, is the question, that, is, it, is it secure or is it more or less secure than other alternatives? Right. I mean, you, you can make an argument for both. In so, uh, you know, we, we, one thing I read is, is that we shouldn't trust um, we shouldn't trust Windows because Windows, for proprietary reasons, they, they have to show their code to, for example, the country of China, mm -hmm. and that's that supposedly is is some kind of some kind of breaker. But I mean, open source, we we can all see the code, we can all fix the code. Mm -hmm. so, right, but do we actually fix the code? I mean, that's why. I think there's another issue here, though, and you take a look at the vast amount of things that we've come to rely on with the internet including essentially all of our financial records unless you don't have a, a credit card uh, of any kind all of our telephone stuff unless you don't have a, a cell phone of any kind uh, all of our medical records uh, there you know if you go to a doctor anywhere they bill your your insurance carrier unless you're a cash uh, payer for for your medical services anybody here in that group uh, all of your medical records are, are eventually uh, they're up there somewhere and uh, the mechanisms to protect that rely on you know not just Linux but the whole stack of, uh, of software that's used to implement the web and when you start digging into it demonstrably <laughs> It's not all that secure there because there are uh, vulnerabilities pointed out over and over again, some of them big, and some of them, I mean, you don't even know where they came from. Uh, that you just, companies say, ah, oh, we, we lost uh, a million or 10 million uh, social security numbers or, uh, you know, everybody's medical records for 12 years or something like that. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, the, 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 I think the question is, is there anything that can be done, realistically, anything that can be done, so that we can have an open computing environment like the web and still have security. And is it just tightening down what we're doing and, and making sure that everybody's more diligent and not uh, allowing overflows and whatever other kind of vulnerabilities there are? Or is there really just no way to do this? Some, well, some of it's education. It, you, you know, you have these new technologies that are, that are coming out, everything's connected. You have, you know, you have TVs with <coughs> phones on them. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's right. And, 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 those, and those TVs and go back to you know, a server over the internet that, that listens for a specific you know, phrase, but still hears everything else. Um, and a camera, too. Yeah. Could have a, a TV could have a, a forward-facing uh, camera. Or so a video game system. Right. Vehicles and, and everything else. I mean, at, at some point, you, you really have to, and home security systems. For, for that matter, you really have to think about what do you want automated. So who who shoulders uh, the responsibility for this? Is it the individual developers? Is it the maintainers? Is it the companies that are funding this? I think it should be everybody. I mean, whoever's involved, it should be the consumer. They want, you know, their they want um, their stuff to be private. They should more or less insist on it and only um, buy certain things. Uh, people that are selling it, you know, they should be able to say, hey, we've got the safest. I mean, if you're dealing with open source, the community wants to protect the people in that too. Um, one issue with the uh, open source and community, though, is like you've got people that are using open source but don't contribute. Contr right. I think there should be more in that area as well. So, I mean, it's not any one particular, I think it's a wide spectrum. So, so we should have, like, like Google and Facebook rely on open SSL to a certain degree. Um, do we have companies that are, you know, the larger companies uh, try and contribute back? Do we have smaller companies contribute back? I think it should be anybody that's using it. Yeah. Anybody else want to pop up here? Those those problems, specific problems, I, I think got fixed. SSL got funded, right? I believe so. Yeah, and uh, the uh, uh, the other the guy that uh, he got funded, and so when when they come up, I think the, the community has uh, gone and, uh, and come up with a solution. But it should come down to well, somebody going bankrupt be it, before they get funded. But yeah. but either you know be it be it for bragging rights or or you know. 
monetary or, or, or maybe a combination of the two, there's certainly incentive out there for, for security researchers in particular to find this stuff. You know, and, and, there's, and it, this, I mean, it's a growing industry. When you come down to the technology part of it, there's, there's no way that we're ever going to secure the internet. We we've, we've already are using and, and dependent on protocols that, by nature, will are not secure. And, is and, is and, there a and, way to make protocols well, that are secure? No. Be, uh, all you can do at this point <coughs> is figure out ways for for security to be implemented. And and but but really no. I mean the, the, those protocols were developed to, to connect uh, nodes across across the network. And security, all that does is break it. So, so, who, so who comes up with these new protocols then? I don't know. That's my question. I mean, we're, we seem to be committed to uh, exchanging all of our medical information, all of our uh, financial information, uh, and, uh, you know, the, the Internet of Things, uh, perhaps uh, everything about everything we do all day long. I mean, somebody can tell who's in this room right now from our cell phones and, and you know, where, mm -hmm. you know, you're tracking and stuff like that. They know I already all, know. They, they already, yeah. There's a little <laughs> Wi-Fi thing over right. there. Uh, <laughs> the, the, the question is, are we, you know, well, we are going in this direction. Uh, you know, is there any way to stop it? Or should we stop it? Is there a way to, to make all this secure? And I haven't heard a solution yet, except say, people saying, well, we should do this. And we should do it. But I haven't heard a specific solution ever. Come on. So we already know. Come on up. Come on up. <laughs> <laughs> I like the way Bruce Schneier puts it. Trust the math. Okay. So we know the math <coughs> necessary to secure the question. Do we? Yes. Uh, what is it? Well, a lot of it's baked into products like PGP and SSL. The protocols might have a problem. Certainly that older SSL v3 had a slight problem. Um, yeah, and it got fixed quickly when it was exposed. So, so, so yeah, we turned it, it off. Get fixed, it got yeah, eliminated. Yeah, they turned it off. Yeah, yeah. It got eliminated. Yeah. <laughs> but the, the threat vector was really quite small. The, the threat surface was really quite small. You had to be in between the router and the usually at an endpoint, so not very useful. But, so I don't think the question is, do we know how to secure things? I think the question is, do we know how to keep them secure, good protocols? Right. And can we convince my mother <laughs> <laughs> to use the security? Um, and I think that's where it really falls down, is I. Unless you sell her an ultra secure iPhone with everything turned on, she's not going to use it. She's not going to right. devote any effort to securing her emails or photos or whatever. Well, one of the one of the things that you brought actually came to my mind. Um, if you know, if the math may be a hundred percent secure, but it's the implementation of that math that may not be as secure. So like buffer overflows and that type of stuff, maybe. So do we get someone to do uh, code verification? Or is open source software going to be able to do that code verification? I know I couldn't take a look at OpenSSL and do any kind of meaningful verification. Certification. Certification. Certifications, yeah. Is that one route? Well, who, who would control that? Well, where would, where would that come from? See, what the, the, the thing that you, it's either open source, which means it's up to the community to, to look at that that stuff and fix it and or it comes out you know it's released by, by a company and that company has an incentive or disincentive you know and 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 there and you know and so and so we go that way but uh, you know it's it's at, at the end of the day it comes down to what it's not it's not is Linux I, I don't think it's the, the question is is Linux secure because any operating system is secure if you take it offline and unplug it. Right. Um, <laughs> yeah. If, but, you know, well, and it's, it, right, that's how Steve Jobs marketed Apple products at, at one point. This stuff comes out of the box, completely secure, it can't be hacked. <laughs> because they had networking turned off. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. um, so it's, it's, you know, how, how do you, how do you, what, what system 
ends up being the most secure probably is going to end up winning. Uh, you know, our, the, the next generation of, of the next iteration of, of computing. And anyone to want to take a pop at this? I, I'll, I'll jump in. Yeah. Okay, come on up. Come on up. I thought I said everything I had to say. <laughs> <laughs> Who's well, leaving? I'm leaving. Okay. <clears throat> All right. So I, I, you got to sit over here. I can't take the same seat. All right. <laughs> <laughs> That's one of the rules. So what, what <laughs> do the users outside of this room care about security? Well, most people care about security when your your social security numbers go flying out of you know Blue Cross Blue Shield they anthem. Well, they want they or expect it to be yeah, secure. That's password. that's their that's what yeah, they there, care. There's a difference because <laughs> I have never seen anyone my parents' age give one hoot about what security bits are turned on on their laptop or their cell phone. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we we talk about uh, uh, your mother. Not being able to, not not willing to work with security, right? Not willing to do anything out of the normal to make sure something is secure. That's not really the big problem. That is a problem, but to me, the big problem is look at the Sony hack. These are the Sony IT guys, the security guys setting up the Sony network that didn't bother setting up security, and and we ended up with the Sony hack that exposed basically half the or most of the Sony corporation, the emails and. And you know they've had a number of problems over the years. Go ahead. But that's that's <laughs> <laughs> my view on security is nothing's ever going to be 100 percent secure. Obviously, yeah. Um, if if so, we would need the police. Mm -hmm. um, you got to educate the end user as much as possible because, man, like for his mother, my mother, my grandmother, it's too difficult to use security. Right. If I tried to teach my parents to try and use uh, GPG, yep, they their heads would explode. Head. <laughs> yeah. Even though my, uh, uh, Google made it easier for you to use it, it recognized the email coming from mm -hmm. such and such. Mm -hmm. um, but security itself is mandatory, but the incentive, the incentive to be secure is on the opposite end, to break security. Understood. Um, there's more money in breaking security than it is. Well, and that's, that's yeah. There, there's a quote that I heard um, that keeps getting played on um, the DEF CON Soma FM channel, which is, you better really love your, this job. I'm going to paraphrase it because I'm going to botch the whole uh, quote. You better love this job because the people on the other end that are breaking this stuff are having a blast. <laughs> 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 They're just enjoying the hell out of themselves. Well, so, I have an Android phone. And on this phone, I have installed um, K9 email mm -hmm. and PGP tied into my K9 email. So I could send a encrypted email that the NSA is known to have serious headaches cracking with. How many people in this room tonight could receive that email and decrypt it on their own cell phones? Not as it is. I, I use PGP. I, I could set it off. But... On your phone? Okay. Anyone else? I could set it up, but I don't have it currently. Well, for you to receive yeah. the email, he'd need your key. Right? No, I just yeah. need his public key. For you to send it. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I, I need just, yeah, I need to give him my yeah. public key. Yeah, you can probably Google my public key yeah. and figure it out. But okay, yeah. so there's there's one this person. Is, this is not your typical audience. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, yeah. I'm actually surprised there's one person. Right. I was gonna I was gonna say see, you know, even with IT. Yeah. No, I, I know I don't have it on mine. I could I could do it. But you the the reason you probably don't have it because now you gotta give all his friends the key, you gotta explain how it works. It's that yeah. easy use and security don't match. Well for, for people who know the reasons or the necessity for security, even they aren't excited about it. In fact It's a pain in the ass. Amongst all my friends who I send email to, I've got like one guy who I can send an encrypted email to and usually it's so, you want to meet me for coffee? Yeah. <laughs> I don't consider that security because, as far as I'm concerned, any email that I send or receive is public. So, I don't send sensitive information through email. This is private, and no one can crack it, even the NSA. I know, I know, but I'm saying uh, the right, way well, I'm. You need to have someone pop up first. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, nice you want to? Yeah. <laughs> no, you're the one who brought the point up. I'm not going to kick you out. So where do we go from here then? Well, I think it, it should be secure by default, which we're not there yet. Okay. Right? You shouldn't be able to pop a computer down and, and call it a server without 
it being secure. What about the the, uh, the underlying stuff though? How do we prevent the next heart bleed or the next poodle or shell shock? Ghost. Or ghost. I, you know, I've been I've been an open source developer for a long, long time, and I've I've uh, I came to it with no real education in programming, and and I like that I could do that. Yeah. But there's some pieces of software out there that were written by people that never had a lick of security training, uh, and they probably should. Uh, things we all depend on. Uh, well, yeah, like somebody the, should look over their shoulder and make sure that that code is secure. Yeah, like the, the, the bash thing, though. It seemed like a, as they added more features, they added one bash critical the, feature that opened the door wide open. It's been around for 20 years. And it's been around for 20 yeah, years. Yeah, that was yeah. the ability to uh, execute, uh, execute things bash. in the environment. Something like that, yeah. Set something in an environment variable and it would execute it. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's which people will start relying on, which is just... I, I'm sure that the feature is great <laughs> for what whoever intended it to do. Yeah. They didn't think about the downside. Yeah. Uh, there should well, be a review process. The de facto standard... Come on up. I'm not, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> the de facto standard of you know, Carnegie and Rich HC, those, that book, the examples are all insecure. Right. They're not written. Oh, buffer overflows secure. were not a thought exactly. of that. Yeah. So how do you train people with that kind of material? Come on up and tell us. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody else want to come on up? Come on up. I'll make a couple comments. So well, then come on, come on up and, and maybe let everyone see your shining face. Maybe they need to tell the company that let it out more responsible. Well, it was let out by, a, by an individual. Yeah. Right. But, if, but if, my comp, if I take your software, and I let my users use it, and it, I'm holding their sensitive information. Yeah. You know, fines should be a lot stiffer. Yeah, yeah. Unfortunately, as, as as you know, we're talking about some of these open source things being insecure. Uh, uh, the commercial stuff is no better. <coughs> but it's, right. uh, worse. Yeah, it's oftentimes much much worse. Well, is that is that categorical though? Can you say that? Because you know, Microsoft can spend the extra couple bucks and actually get someone to go through and take a look at their code. They yeah. can afford the tools to go through and, yeah. you know, see if, like electric fence, I mean, you know, is that great? No, but it is a way to figure out buffer overflows yeah. and memory mismanagement. We should have a presentation on electric fence sometime. It'd be nice. <laughs> It'd be cool. <laughs> it seems to me that uh, one of the things that concerns me, you talk about making companies responsible for what they do to mm -hmm. the risk they put people. I'm concerned about when people lose their password. This has been a problem as far as that I'm concerned for a good 20 years. As soon as they had a password. As soon as, as, soon as they lose their password, the companies don't want to deal with them in person, right? Mm -hmm. They don't want to take a phone call if you lose your password. So they collect the answers to the same questions all of them. Yeah. And then when they get broken into, you find out, the, the hackers find out, what their mother's main name is and who their sure. what, what was the name of their first pet? Sure, because they leaked that all over the internet. And it makes everybody else's systems insecure, right? But there's no accountability. You've got accountants who insist that they use methods like that, mm -hmm. right? Because that's that's the, the the normal course. You're negligent unless you you practice due diligence. Yeah. They define the stupid practice as being due diligence. If, if you go on to Ancestry.com, you can find my mother's maiden name. If you go on to IMDb, you might be able to find my favorite movie. If you go on to uh, somewhere where they have my birth certificate, you can figure out where I was born. Why would you answer any of those questions with an honest answer? Well, that's the, that's the, the case, you know. I have Most one that's do. great. Yeah, the, the, well, the thing is, it's, it's easier the to remember. The, the thing is, if you're going to lie, you got to remember the lie. Yeah. If you yeah. can remember the lie, you can probably remember the password. <laughs> if, if you can remember the password, there's, then the whole thing and, is... <laughs> and the real answer really isn't important. It's the, whatever answer you use that's important. And you're right. leaking that all over yeah. the internet. Well, yeah. or, or, or ask me my favorite food. And it's like, yeah. what what day of the week? You yeah. know? <laughs> what am I in the mood for? Sure. Exactly. Sure. But what the is, problem is people naively answering these questions. Mm -hmm. The information gets out sure. easily over with one crack, perhaps Sony or something. Yeah. Uh, with their uh, crack servers or whatever, and then uh, everybody else, uh, uh, they're insecure everywhere else. I use a different set of, of uh, security information for for my uh, financial stuff than I use for anything 
else, but I, other than that, I'm probably pretty much wired. Well, some of the time you don't even Problems. get a choice. But again, we, we come back. We come back to the end user, right? I mean, yeah, why are we saying what if what if uh, these Instead companies, of, you know, uh, hospitals, medical centers, uh, anywhere that take a credit card has a third party audit? Mm -hmm. You know, and go through it and check. That's where that, like you said, Sony, the IT security guy. Oh, I got a gravy job, I'm making six figures. Oh, I look good. But if they had that third party auditor come in and check. I went to a medical center actually this weekend. I couldn't log into a computer to check the IP address. I said, Oh, what's this right here? Michigan 11. Oh, that's it. Mm -hmm. But if someone came and audit, that's a no-no. You can't have it. Exactly. That's a hundred thousand dollar fine. Well, and it also depends on the audit firm as well and how well sure. that they know their stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, you can find audit firms out there. I'm sure they could, you know, you could pass whatever audit they depends on who's paying the auditor. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. But mm -hmm. if they get so hacked, <laughs> now who's in trouble? The auditor passed it. Yeah, right. <coughs> Gib, you want to come out? Oh, yeah, I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the big company answer, right? And you were just yeah. touching on a little bit there with uh, your auditors and stuff like that. So you start off with policy. You, know, you state this is your, your policies, and you set up a bunch of rules that interpret what those policies mean. Mm -hmm. You set up an independent group that then forces any group that's going through development changes to adhere to the to the rules and explain what they're doing. And every single one of these things is something that's dynamic and learning, and and you're building new rules and you're you're testing out what people are doing. And it becomes you know part of the culture that whenever you're building code, you know you know you're going to go through this gate review where you have to make sure all your answers are in there correctly and, and reviewed and that type of thing. And that doesn't take an external auditing type of thing. I mean, you could have that as part of the process, but for the most part, it becomes internally part of what the group does. I've, I've had certain audits, though, where the, the auditing uh, figured out the letter of what it was we were supposed to do, not the spirit. And so we checked off all those boxes and we delivered the biggest pile of steaming crap that everyone has ever seen. Yep. Yep. So and certainly a cultural and, and when aspect. You're, when you're a company the size of Ford Motor Company, you can have all these groups of people doing that. But when you're, you know, the, 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 the environment these days is for the small startups, the, you know, the three guys that are trying to trying to develop the next the next uh, uh, Twitter or Facebook or whatever it happens to be. Mm -hmm. They don't, you know. They don't have those resources. Well, but you know, they're they're making a conscious decision not to spend the resources on security because they have another need. They yeah, need right. to make the yeah. product sure. profitable right oh. away. Oh. So in that case, you, you understand when you're buying a product from sure. a startup that there's gonna be some compromises in that sure. area. Well in many cases it's not even buying a product, it's you know, creating an account on Facebook. Yeah. Exactly. You know, when when Facebook's motto is go fast and break things. Uh, there you or, go. Or don't be afraid to go fast and break some, something. Yeah, something along those lines. Yeah. Go fast and break things. Yeah, yeah we had a, a Google speaker come into our group and, and talk to us a little bit about their fail quick, fail yeah. often type of philosophy. Fail fast and fail often. And so we're looking at this as well, you know, how can we take this behemoth of a company and start moving to that type of processing and, and doing that. So you're, you're going to have to you know, have the, the traditional type of way of doing things, but then you get this greenfield area where you, you start up some, some yeah. groups and, and provide them with that opportunity to, to be a little more dynamic in the way that they approach that. And so it comes down to really the knowledge level of the people that are involved in the groups, right? Mm -hmm. So you know, you know that if you put something out and it doesn't have all that security stuff in it, that's probably not a good thing. You get someone oh, yeah. right out of college who, who learned from the, the books that didn't have any of the security stuff in it, you're going to get a product that doesn't have that security. Yeah. Well, guys, we're going to wrap this up yep. for the time being. So thank you very much. Appreciate it. All right. So uh, Chris is here.